and we're live. Hey, trying Yo, to reboot again. Hey, everybody, how are you? It's Jeff Kelman, Sally Canine Training. Whoa, that's a new shine. Oh, no. What the heck's going on here? What the Frank Sinatra? That's never happened before. And I'm not on here. Wow. All right, everybody. How's everybody doing? It's Jeff Kelman of Solid Canine Training. This is a Q&A show. What's today? Monday? So we did it. We did oh, it. There you go. go. So we did it. We made it to, hey, John, how are you, buddy? We made it to Monday. It's pretty good. We try to, we try to do it on Monday. We always do it on Monday. It's really, really important. If you're new to my world, and a lot of you are, we get new YouTubers all the time. Thank you for being on YouTube. Also, for all the folks on, oh, God, I got an itchy nose. Ah. We're really more greasy. I know. Look it's at been, our skin. It, it's, it's been a heck of a day. It's Why don't we have sweating. makeup on? We've got 900, 900, 90 degree weather here. Um, if you're brand new to my world, my name is Jeff Gelman of Solid Canine Training, and I've got a dog training facility here in Providence, Rhode Island. And what we do is we do a lot of aggression rehab. I'm going to adjust that camera a little bit. A lot of aggression rehab, and we do a lot of behavior modification. Um, we obviously teach dogs, um, you know, what we want and what we don't want. Um, but a lot of my show, if you're brand new to the world, is scooby scoot in a little bit so it's big. you got a bigger presence on that camera. No, I'm caught. There you go. Get bigger pictures on the camera. I'm caught on something. Okay. Well, then you'll do the best you can right there. Um, is a lot of folks are going to be asking us, hey, Jeff, how do I stop this? Hey, Jeff, how do I stop that? So you hear me talk about a lot about punishment a lot. And it's really, really important that people understand training, it's the only way to stop it on want to behavior is through punishment. So I would say 90% of our day, 90% of the day at our training center is probably based on reward-based training. But we're never going to get into the political aspect of training because people that like to spout too much like scientific stuff, they actually probably don't really actually know practical applications to dogs and they just like sounding really smart. So they get their ego strokes through sounding smart. And I get my ego strokes through helping as many people as possible. Um, so that's what um, I'm going to be talking about. So a lot of people are going to ask me, how do you stop an unwanted behavior? So I'm going to say, okay, well, you need to figure out a way to properly punish your dog. Now, punishment is not abuse at all. If it is, you need to educate yourself on actually how dogs learn. Um, a so what we're going to do is we're going to start right in. Now is a great time to start asking your dog training questions. This is an audience participation program. Without questions, we have no show. So we need people to ask questions. Um, and they start coming in pretty hot and heavy. Unfortunately, we don't get to all the questions. So it's your best interest to start asking questions um, at the beginning. There's also this little dollar sign down at the bottom. A lot of people want to become, you know, they'll become super fans or super chat. Your question goes right up to the top. So if it gets really, really busy, you can always, you hit that, you ask your questions. People have donated, you know, anywhere from $1.99 to $10, but we don't do this to monetize. But we talked about, hey, maybe we can do this at least to get date night money, right? Movie money, baby. Movie, Movie money. Movie money, $11 a piece no of the Avon. No popcorn. Nah, Chocolate. We can do popcorn. We do the Reese's. Mm -hmm. We do the yeah. Reese's stuff. All right. So All right. what do we got? Mm -hmm. Hi, John. Hey, Missy May. Hey, Jeff. And now we got Jody. Good morning from Down Under, guys. Love your work. Kingdom cool. One. Thank you. Hey, guys. Can you recommend a good e-collar? Yeah. So, Jody, I did, I did a tip of the day. Um, that's not Jody. That's Kingdom Kingdom One. I did a tip of the day, and it's like, watch what we do. So in the last 10 years, I've been showing e-cowers in videos, and I make tons of videos, over thousands of videos, and I always have the same e-cower. Back at the beginning, I used to use Dogtra. I'm still okay with Dogtra, but I use e-cower technology. So um, what I want you to do is watch our videos and how we how we train dogs, because that's even it's not even an e-cower conversation anymore. It's just a dog training conversation, philosophy conversation. But we like e-cower technologies. The the also you can go to our website. You don't have to buy them from us. You can buy them from Amazon if you want to. I highly highly recommend not getting crap e-cowers. There is a humongous difference, and I couldn't even give you dog training advice if you had a crap e-cower. So we like. Dogtra in eCower technology. Um, Garmin is good technology, but it's hard to train the way we train. Sport Dog tends to run hot. What I mean by hot, their level one seems to be too um, strong, even for, for at least how we train. If you've got a dog that's on punishment level only, remote collars actually aren't just used for punishment. It actually could be used for shaping behaviors as well, as well as the kindergarten phase of dog training. Um, the sport dog would be great for, for more advanced stuff, in my opinion. 
Um, that's just how we train. Everybody trains remote cows a little bit differently. And thanks for the great question. Next. <clears throat> Summer, what setting do you put your e-collar on and why? Momentary boost, continuous boost, momentary continuous? Well, it all depends on your training philosophy. So you want to make the collar to match your philosophy. So I actually don't personally use boost. A lot of the staff member uses boost. Um, plenty of people that I know use boost. I like my collars on momentary is my black button. Red button is continuous. And then obviously you've got the setting in the middle to go up and down. That's what I like to do. Um, but as far as like, how do you train the dog? All depends on what we're doing. The kindergarten stage, we do lower level, continuous on, continuous off. It simulates pressure on, pressure off. Same training philosophy that any of the horse people out there understand. People that apply spatial pressure to dogs. Actually, food luring is pressure on, pressure off. Believe it or not, if you train with a toy, that's also pressure on, pressure off. If you want to see one of my dogs really like increased pressure, don't give her a tug. Give her the tug, the release of pressure. So um, that's how we do it. So it's not about how we set it up. It's about what first, what's your training philosophy, establish that first, then make the, the e-collar settings the way that you want it to do. Next. Okay. Um, Meredith. One and a half year old GSD who has reactivity issues with people and dogs. He has bitten two previous roommates. What can I do to avoid him biting my new roommate? E collar and prong trained. I want him to like her. Well, let's get this out of the. Where is that? Who's over oh, there? Meredith. So let's for Meredith, let's do this. Number one, I want you to get rid of the philosophy of you want your dog to like your roommates. Let's scrap that. Because what you really want is your dog not to bite your roommate. And there is a big difference. There's a humongous difference. Because if you use, I'll save that for later. Yep. If you use that philosophy of the emotional standpoint that you want your dog to bite, you'll assume that if your dog gets along and listens and plays with your roommate, it won't bite, which is a falsehood. And then you'll assume that if your dog hates your roommate, it'll mm -hmm. bite and it won't. So the goal is to get your dog to not bite. It's hard when you've got roommates and it's hard when you've got family members that are not all on the same page. Your roommate doesn't need to be on the same page, technically because it's not their dog. They didn't sign up for this. So what I'd like you to do is make sure that you keep, you utilize a crate at night, utilize a crate when you're not home. Um, I want the roommate not to try to convince the dog to love it um, with over affection, with high pitched voices, with Food. The last time I got bit by a dog, I was actually delivering a food reward to a dog. So the best thing to do is work your dog, make sure your dog knows that biting is inappropriate. And I don't want you to let your roommate put pressure on the dog and don't have this mindset that you want your dog to love your roommate. It might not. It might not. Next. Uh, Kingdom One. Thank you. I will watch your e-collar videos tonight. But, but watch also all of our videos. Even <clears throat> if you don't train with an e-collar, Watching our videos on our, um, um, our, our our philosophy is more important than the tools. Our philosophy is more important than the tools. Next. Uh, Jessica. Hey, Jeff. Wait, is that? Okay. Ja, yep. Momentary versus continuous on walks. I found momentary works for head-on distractions. Continuous if he's turned his head for a sudden rear distraction. Is that okay? Jessica, you answered your own question. Who gives a shit what I have to say? Right. Who cares? Who cares what I have to say? How about if I told you that it was wrong? It's 100% wrong. You're doing it wrong. But meanwhile, you just said, it's working. Don't worry about me. It's working for you. Got it? Next. Uh, By the way, I'm not mad. Next. He's just passionate. Yeah. Robin, when teaching a dog the out command, what do you do when the e-collar setting is all the way up to 50 and it just pisses the dog off? Well, what I want you to do is... Check for fit, but chances are, make sure you're hitting momentary. We do momentary for out, not continuous for out. But 50 is just a number. We have dogs that blow through 100 when they're in drive. We have dogs that blow through double collars at 100 when they're in drive. We have dogs that blow through dog tray at 127 when they're in drive. But if you're doing out when the dog is not aroused, start with a non-arousal out, then it'll be easier for it'll be easier for you to do. It'll be easier for you to do. Next. <clears throat> Keith, when going to the beach, my dog sometimes gets excited and runs after people. How to punish her properly when she already reacted 
reacted and how to start teaching her that's not acceptable. We use the e-collar. Okay, Keith, I don't want your dog off leash at all. Got it? I don't want your dog off leash. And you actually technically shouldn't be bringing your dog to the leash. The beach. The beach. And I'm not trying to be a dick here. I'm not trying to be a hard ass. But if your dog came after me at the beach, it wouldn't be good. And I'm not a violent person. But there's no effing way I'm going to a public beach and having a dog go after me or my kids or my dog. And I'm very outspoken about that. So don't have your dog off of a leash. Now, question, how do I get a better recall with high levels of distraction? On a long line, make sure the dog's got a really good recall, and then you need to proof your dog in drive around high levels of distraction. Meaning, your dog, can you take, a, can you take your dog when it's running towards someone and spin it around on a dime? when it doesn't want to, when it wants to go after the person. So until you can do that, you can't do, you can't, you can't take your dog off leash. All it takes is one time. And I'm not the only one out there that feels strongly about, I don't want dogs coming after me. None of us do. So whether, and I don't care if your dog is friendly or not, by the way, any dog running towards me is going to be a threat. And especially with somebody screaming, my dog is friendly, because I can't tell you how many times I've been jumped on. I can be knocked over. My kids can be knocked over. My dog can be attacked. Um, you can harm one of us. So and somebody that might be might be petrified of dogs. Or after that incident, you can scar them for life. That happens. So teach your dog recall and high levels of distraction on an enclosed area and proof it, proof it, proof it, proof it, proof it. And then if your dog has ball drive, the question is, can you throw a ball? And can you call your dog back before it gets to the ball? If you can't, you most likely can't call it back before it gets to a human. So <clears throat> what do you do? Keep your dog on a leash and more training. Next. Uh, John Snow, if you were to hire a dog trainer, what would you look for and where would you look? Um, John Snow, I wouldn't look at credentials unless I was wanting to compete my dog. So I know. Joel, can you do me a favor? Can you just like sort of tilt that light up a little bit? We've never had that shine. Maybe it moved or something. Yeah, I don't know. It's really weird. And maybe, you know what? Maybe my head's always in front of it. Uh, no, no. I don't think if you so. can't tilt it easily, Joelle, that means it wasn't yeah, it, it wasn't it's, like, it's like tilted out of place. So anyway, um, we'll just leave leave it for now as is annoying as annoying it is. Um, so what I would do is you wanna take that off the wall? Yeah, we can also do that. Oh shh. <clears throat> All right. Okay. So what we can do is say, sorry, everybody on SoundCloud and Spotify and Google, because we just had to do a physical thing, which you won't see, you won't see on audio only, but I had to move a photo off my wall because there was a glare on it. Um, so what I would do is this, I would go to their website. I'd go to their Facebook page. I'd go to their Instagram. I'd read about their philosophy. I'd watch them work. I'd see if I had a connection with a dog. I would, um, I wouldn't look at Yelp. I wouldn't look at any review site whatsoever because most of those are fake. It's easy right now. It's easy. It's easy to, it's easy to get fake positive and put fake negative ones on other people's sites. Um, I would see if there's a connection that I had with them. Did they align with my philosophy? Do I think they're going to, they're going to get a good, um, do, do a good job next so in total transparency. Mm -hmm. I want total transparency ask that. And I also want them to have a good human skills, good human skills. Next. This one's from Pamela. How do you CYA after training aggressive dogs, big insurance policy? CYA. I'm not sure what CYA is. Co cover my uh, ass. Thank you. How do I cover my ass training aggressive dogs? We don't get bit, but of course we have a big insurance policy because we're, we're a real business. So every business should have at least a couple million dollars minimum in insurance policies. But how do we, when we train aggressive dogs is we you should only be working with aggressive dogs. If you've got a skill set that, that is going to be up there, but accidents happen. Anything could happen. Like we can have a, our air conditioning unit fail and it can get hot and a dog could die. We have safety protocols for that. We actually have a heat alarm um, in the kennel, which would actually trigger a, 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 um, a notification to the alarm company, which would then also notify notify us. So of course we have we have insurance, but having insurance won't prevent you from getting bit. And 
you don't want to rely on your insurance to work with aggressive dogs. You want to rely on your on your skill set. You want to rely on your skill set. Next, but yeah, you have if you de- if you can't afford insurance as a dog trainer, think of another line of work. Next, because it's not that much money. Next, uh, this one's from Lori. First, e collar train them. In quotes. Okay, I don't know what that meant. Me either. Yeah. Jeff. Yeah. It's another Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Lori, I, we must not have seen your first question. Next. Um, dog walks on structured walk and heel. Great in house and on walks till sees another dog. Corrections escalate him. Gets very audible yeah. when corrected. Wears prong and e-collar trained following your video. So, Jeff, you're missing it. What you're doing is you're coming in too late. So you're coming in too late. You're giving the dog the information already at the past the beginning sequence of the events, which is arousal. So what you need to do is you need to come down with a firm punisher at the beginning of the sequence, which is usually when the dog is barely aroused. So at the first sign of the dog paying attention, you're doing that. And you're also probably chasing, you're chasing the energy instead of squashing the energy. And that happens a lot. So what you want to do is you want to do a 180 move. You want to use a bonker. You want to teach that dog the word no in a not out in public first. Um, that's that's what you're going to do. And it's a protocol. It's a process. Some dogs speed up really, really quick, but there's always a sign. There's always a sign. Utilize space as well. You want to also utilize space. Next. Uh, Drew, what up, Jeff and Linda? Hey, Drew, what's up? Uh, Kayla. Hi, Jeff. My mom's pup used to constantly bully my pup by taking his toys when he's using them. Okay. She was obsessed. Now he growls at her when she approaches him with his toy. That makes sense. I correct this, right? I didn't even realize it was resource guarding until a week ago. It's always just felt like he's been standing up for himself. Um. Well, hold on here. Hold on here. Who are you? Cor- who are you correcting? Are you correcting the dog? Okay, hold on here. Your mom's pup used to constantly bully your pup. Is your, okay, is your pup growling at your mom's pup? No way. Don't correct your dog for that. Correct the other dog. Correct the other dog. Got it? So if, if, and this is a bad comparison, but I'll humanize the shit out of this. If somebody, if somebody walked up to one of my kids and asked him for, and forced him to give him money every day, and then one day my kid fought back, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I got no problem with that whatsoever, whatsoever. I'm not a violent person at all, but no, you need to advocate for your dog who's having their toys stolen. So I would never encourage a toy stealer. So the dog is growling saying, get the Frank Sinatra away from my pup. I mean, my toy, the other dog better go, oh, I'm sorry. Why didn't you say that before? So the missing link was, it's not your fault, but you're not advocating for your pup earlier. No big deal. You didn't ruin your dog. You're not a bad person. You didn't mess anything up. But I would, if I had a dog that was trying to take dogs, if one of my dogs was constantly stealing toys from one of my dogs, that the stealer would be corrected. Got it? Not the victim of the crime, the criminal. <clears throat> Next. This one's from Heather. Hey, Hi, Heather. guys. I have already achieved a solid off leash heel with my dog, and I'm working on a focus competition style heel. How do you go about maintaining a focused heel? I have no idea, Heather. Because I don't do it, I don't care about it, and it has no purpose in my life. Also, be careful about neck trauma. Make sure your dog's getting regular adjustments or getting canine massage on its neck. Long-term focused heel is bad for your dog's bone structure. So what I would do, though, is if you want to learn more about that, start following some sport dog people. It's done, though, with a ball and or food. But that's no, we're pet dog trainers. We're pet dog trainers, and and I and I don't want to do. I don't want my dogs looking up at me while I'm walking. That that's they don't they don't need to do that. Checking in with me is one thing. Focused heel, focused heel for long periods of time is not good for the dog's uh, structure. Next, and don't take my word for it. Just talk to a talk to a chiropractor. <clears throat> Can I chiropractor? This one's from Joe. Howdy, y'all. My pity is always on a prong. She snapped at a beautiful boxer across the street yesterday. Best punishment besides the prong correction? I think the prong doesn't work with him anymore. Um, well, first of all, who cares if it's a beautiful oh, oh, wait. boxer or I not? I don't own an e-collar yet. Planning on getting one soon. So it doesn't make a difference. Thanks, Joe. It doesn't make a difference if it's a beautiful boxer or an ugly boxer. So I'm, I just sometimes pick apart people's questions, not to be a dick, but to like sort of get like, what's going on with your, what's going on inside Joe's head? You know what I mean? It's like... Joe, you could be like, Jeff, you're being a jerk. 
I'm never asking a question again. You're ripping apart my question. Like, I just wanted help. Go F yourself. But uh, there's, there, there's absolutely a component, absolutely a psychological component to somebody saying a beautiful boxer. That doesn't make you a bad person. It doesn't make you a bad person. What it does is this, though. It says to me, possibly, why did your dog do that? Because it's a beautiful boxer. It's a nice dog. Don't worry about the beautiful boxer. Concentrate on your dog's behavior, what, you, what you're doing. And if you're brand new to my show, you're probably going to think I'm nuts. And if you've known me for a long time, you definitely know that I am nuts. So, you know, you guys are all on, you guys are all on the right path. Um, so this is what I want you to do. Remote cower is going to be um, a game changer. But let's also make sure that we're on the same page as far as the rules. And I don't want to – so snapping mean were they close enough to make contact? And if they were, that's possibly your first mistake. So I don't want dogs to ever meet each other on a leash. I don't want dogs to greet each other. I don't want dogs to be like, oh, my dog is friendly. Let's let them say hi. To me – the walk is all about work. It's migration. It's mind your own damn business. Walk next to me. A remote cow. So what could you have done? Bronco correction. After the fact, it's not as effective, but you do what you had to do. Next. This one's from Melissa. Hi, Melissa. How do you know whether to use a 2.25 or a three millimeter prong collar? Usually through experience, but I mean the way the best way to do it is historically dogs that are 45 pounds and other, unless it's one of those squat like pocket pitties, is going to probably be a 2.25. And then you can actually even add extension um, um, uh, prongs links to them for even bigger dogs. But most dogs, once they're trained, could get away with a 2.25. But Try to do a 2.25 for 45 pounds and under. Next. This one's from uh, AJ. Hey, AJ. Dog growls when new people come into house. His hair stands up, but when he sniffs them, he's excited to be with them. Yep. What should I do to stop growling? Help introducing people coming in. So don't, don't. So this is what you're going to do. Right now, you'd stop the growling. Best way to do it is to bonk the dog. Bonker is a wrapped up towel. If you're not familiar with bonkers, it is warm in here tonight. Um, it, it's warm outside actually as well. Um, old house, no air conditioning. Do you know Angelo says sweat into the oldies now? Does he? When he's hot. Like, he's I'm the only house the where Angelo lives on the third floor. It'll get to like 120, if not higher up there, if we didn't have an air, a little, we have a little window unit. This house was built in 1903. It's a three story house, no AC. And, and, there's just no wind coming in either. It's also earlier than normal when we're doing this show. So what I would do is, is teach that dog to, the big thing is arousal. The big thing right now is arousal. So if your dog was in place lying down, doing nothing, then your dog would be fine. Your dog would be fine. So that's what it is. And it doesn't need to say hello to them at all. Get your dog to start existing around people. Next. Uh, John. Do you think breeding and genetics has a lot to do with the dog's temperament? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's sort of what the temperament of the dog is, right? Um, so, I mean, can you change a dog's temperament? That's probably open to discussion. Three different dog trainers will give you three different opinions on that. I think there are some innate qualities in dogs that are just there. Um, but I think breeding has a lot to do with a dog. Um, there's some things that my dogs do that I had nothing to do with. They're just solid dogs um, that like they were, that's just the way they are. But obviously, which is more important, nature or nurture, which, which has more influence on a dog? You know, again, that's probably open for massive amounts of discussion. All I know is this, it is what it is. Try to get the best dog you can to start out with. And then to try to make sure you're stopping on to behaviors adding one to behaviors and creating a good state of mind on the dog. Next. Lori, she says, was wondering, my question was just skipped a bit ago. Not sure why it's gray instead of black. I didn't see it at all. I didn't see it at all. We didn't see your question. I saw at all. that second part come through. Yep. So we saw, we saw remote cower train on a remote cower first in quotes. That's it. That's, that's it. And then we just see your question in white right now. If it's in gray, that means, I don't know. I have no idea. There is, unless there's an auto, unless there's an auto something that, 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 you know, I mean, if you said fuck, I mean, it shouldn't because it doesn't delete on my fucks. So I have no idea. I have no idea. We didn't do it. Can't delete your fucks. No, you can't. Now, you try to though. You try to block me. Though. That's a whole different That's story. A whole story. Okay. Oops. Let's see. Uh, 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 
I, I just went up too high. Okay, Meredith, thanks, Jeff. You're right about liking her. Would having her work and train with him build a better relationship? It's more of a respect thing, so he won't bite, correct? So, Meredith, well, yes, working her would help. Working your dog would help. But plenty of dogs, okay, no dog should be biting anybody in the house. But shit happens. So the biggest thing is be careful about pushing your, your pushing pressure on dogs. So watch out for like, if you're, if your roommate, like, but I want to be your dog's friend. I want your dog. It's like a clingy girlfriend or a clingy boyfriend. Nobody likes that. Well, at least I don't. Right. So, you know, I got the opposite. I got one that doesn't give a shit about me. So um, and then you there's, just, and you just keep coming back. And then there's my, baby. and then there's my wife, you know, we're just talking about the girlfriend, you know? <laughs> so, 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 any, so anyway, so that face doesn't intimidate me. It actually gets me aroused. You want to keep doing it? <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thought so. All right. So, um, so Meredith, yeah. So working the dog, I think would be a lot better. Um, but just the big issue is this. Don't try. I don't want your roommate or you to have this philosophy of, we want them to like, Okay, we do want them to get along, but the more structure, the better. The best way to get along with a dog, a lot of times, is to ignore it. Next. Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, spin a spur. Any T3 dates for 2019? Uh, Are there going to be any in Providence? Oh, yeah. We do two a year in Providence. So, October, we do, what was the last one? June. June. We do a June and an October one in Providence. We do a February one in February 2019 will be in Chatsworth, California. That's probably going to be the regular schedule. Next. Um, Joseph, my King Corso tries to eat my Marky. Help. Okay. So Joseph, that's, that is a very long involved question. I would look into doing a Skype with me. I'm not trying to get you to spend money with me, but that's all. There's also a huge size difference there, which means the major, major safety risk. It doesn't take much to kill a Morky or a Chihuahua or any or Shih Tzu or any of these small breeds, especially with a power breed like yours. So until you get help, keep them separate. But again, the, the, the big thing you want to do is massive amounts of structure, massive amounts of structure in your house. Start out with that. You should be containing your dogs, not in a separate room, not behind a baby gate, but crate them at night. Morky too. Crate them during the day when you're not there. Make sure there's no dogs in your bed and cut down on affection obedience train those dogs you got to figure out what a proper punisher is um everybody in the house has to be on the same page but it's not like an easy like just do this just do this it's a full philosophy of dog training that we do next mm -hmm. but we deal with dogs like that every single day <clears throat> next robin hey robin when a dog raises their hackles is it voluntary or involuntary that's a really good question I wonder if it's something like goosebumps, whether you can't. It's arousal. Yeah. It's arousal. So are they consciously doing it or unconsciously doing it? That's a really good question. I don't know. Next. Beverly. Is there a way to determine if a dog is fear or dominant aggressive and is correction the same? Correction the same. In other words, you try to bite me, I punish you. Bottom line. I don't care what your motivation is. I don't care what it is. Now, dominant, there's not as many out there as you think. Like we rarely see predatory aggression in dogs. Rarely. A lot of it's fear-based stuff. Um, so, you know, can you see the difference? Absolutely. Is our training program any different? Slightly. But is the punisher the same? Yes. Is our reward the same? Yes. Next. Um, Paul Granger Granger. No question, just saying howdy. Hey, howdy. Howdy. Hey, hey Paul. How's it going, Paul? That's that's the dude that's married to this chick. Oh. Isn't that nice? That is nice. Isn't that nice? Uh Joel. <laughs> it's good. All right. She's behaving herself, Paul. For right now, in this moment. Yeah. In, in this moment. At 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, she's behaving herself. The she's, rest of the day, I... She's fine. The rest of the day, I can't... I, 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 <laughs> Don't start causing problems. I'm not causing problems. No. She's fine. She's, she's fine. fine. She's fine. You're welcome. <laughs> Don't fuck with this. Robin, 
Has anyone ever told you to put your dog on a leash when you've been when they've been off leash? I had that happen, even though I told her my dog is completely under control. Um, I don't go. I don't. I don't have my. I've got. So when I when I take my dogs off leash, there's nobody else around. There's nobody else around. So no. But if I was in an area where there was a lot of population and it was an on leash area, I would I would be proactive and put them on leash out of courtesy. But when I'm at like, you know, for RV life, when I'm at truck stops or, or Walmart parking lots or I'm at rest stops, I go off to the side, off the beaten path. So, you know, again, most people don't care that your dog is supposedly and your dog might be off leash trained. They're doing it out of like past experiences, usually past experiences, usually next. Melissa, she says, Kayla, I corrected my puppy for stealing my older dog's toys. It worked perfectly. Nice. Karen, thank you, Jeff, for all the info and support. My mini educator is finally ordered. I will be studying your videos. Awesome, Karen. Chevy. What's up, Chevy? Hey, Chevy. Dominant dog collar, prong and e-collar. E-collar for dog aggression, loading, DDC. If I miss the correction, prong for a good heel. Is this setup okay to use and in what order? Yeah, in the net. but you can also use the dominant dog collar to stop arousal instantly. So usually the dominant dog collar goes up super high. It's also the smallest thing. Then you can also have the prong collar below that and then the remote collar above that. Next. Robin, my 11-month-old Dobie, <laughs> sorry, doesn't respond to other dog's cues when they've had enough. How can I teach her to be more respectful? 11 month old. Yeah, that makes sense. It's going to get worse before it gets better. So that your dog's cue, your other dog's cues aren't strong enough. Remote collar on that dog. Give that dog a little bit of a reminder. Also, when you see us out in, in um, the, the yard um, doing socialization, you'll see us with dressage whips. They're actually, they're actually technically called stock. Those are actually stockyard whips. Quick, swift um, smack on the butt usually stops dogs from all that nonsense as well. Next. Um, Beverly. Hey, Beverly. Can you use the longer contacts on the e-collar even if the dog is short-haired? Um, you can, but be careful because it might you might create pressure sores because it's unneeded. Next. Lori Hoffman. My questions are grayed out and not posting for some reason. So, Lori, I just saw that, and it's not grayed out. So I don't understand what's going on because you just posted a question. So it, in other words, that statement wouldn't have mattered if All it right, was a question or not. And then down below it says, weird, that posted, but not my question. Yeah, mm -hmm. I have no idea. Lori, don't get paranoid. We're not out to get you. I have no idea what's going on. Should she like log out and log back Maybe in? log out, log back in. I have no idea what's going on. I, I just sit here and just like make a fool of myself. Ah, it's because the message is too long. Thank you, Robin. Robin, oh. Gray means the message is too long. Ah, thank you. There you go. Your message is too long. See that? I never ask questions on my show. Next. Um, Which means if your question is too long, I'm not going to be able to answer it because it's too long of a freaking question. Long. Next. Kevin. Hey, Kevin. My cattle dog will selectively herd some people who run or walk by him and nip at heels. Oh, we use good. the mini educator, but it's tough to catch because it seems so random. Any tips? So it's never random. There's always a tell. And it's usually arousal. So to me, if you had a cattle dog, and I work with plenty, you need to deliver a very firm punisher. Put it this way. Your dog should never exhibit that behavior, ever, in its life. It should never exhibit hurting of human beings, ever. That's not what it was genetically designed for. It was designed to go after cattle. So I know maybe, like... You might have called your ex a cow, but it shouldn't be biting. Was that inappropriate? What? Joelle made a funny phrase. Was that not acceptable? What? I wasn't even listening. Oh, good. Well, you never listen. Really? It's like, that's great. I, I felt like just, that in our I was kind of like reading. I felt like that on our, like, when we were up on the, getting our wedding vows and, like, I professed my love for you. I feel like you weren't listening back then either. <laughs> Probably wasn't. Right. It's something else on my mind. So right. At my wedding. Right. Um, so what I would do is um, I would I would make sure there's a very firm punisher for that. How do you set it up? Find friends of yours to run around the dog, and then you eliminate the arousal. Eliminate the arousal. Because there's plenty of working cattle dogs that literally that's what they do for a living, and they would never go after a human. They would wash them out. They would wash them out. Next. Robin, 
Yep. Unfortunately, I don't have a structured daycare in my area. My dog blows off their recalls, but is 100% compliant with me. That, well, that's the, so tell them to stop calling your dog. Do you know what I mean? Tell them to stop calling your dog back. How's that? Or put a remote call on your dog and encourage them to use it. Or don't worry about it. Their business, their rules. So you have two options. Put up with the rules or leave. It's a private business, right? That's sort of what that's sort of the way it works. That's sort of way, you know, if you came in, if you know, if somebody came into us and was like, I want you to walk the dog like two feet in front of you. I'm like, that's not how we walk dogs here. You know, I mean, I maybe that's a, a bad example, but most business they're not gonna they're not gonna listen. They're not gonna listen. They've got a procedure for everything. Next. It's a weird noise. Um where is it? Kevin? No, and Sabrina says go get a room. Oh, Sabrina. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. See that little dollar amount right down there? You click on that, you send us some cash, we'll go rent a room next. All right. Paul, pink flamingos are on point. Love the shirt. Paul, price. this you know when the show would look really good, Paul, is out on that boat of yours, right? <laughs> How about this? Joelle stays down here. I'll head up there. You and I on the boat together on the lake, having a great time. Well, by the way, you all just flipped me off. Next. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first person. Right. Spinisfer. Do most people write off your T3 class as a business expense? I mean, if you've got a, if you're, if you're a sole proprietor, you, I don't know if you can or not, but if, as long as you're an LLC or, you know, are you hot? You're hot too, aren't you? Yeah. I'm sweating to the oldies. I know. <laughs> I know. You want to do me, do me a favor? Yeah. Go out there, make a left into our bedroom. There's a fan on the floor. Unplug it. So there's two fans, one in the window, one on the floor. Grab that, and if you put it, like, right behind you, like, set it up right behind you and plug it in, you'll be fine. Um, uh, uh, yes, I mean, it's, everything's a business expense. Hotel, travel, food, seminar fees. Everything's a business expense. Everybody should actually own a business. Everybody should actually eat, have a business so you can write things off. But talk to your CPA about that. Don't ask a dog. Don't talk to a dog trainer about. It. Um, it, but yes, it's an expense. Next, Renee. Hi, Jeff and Linda. Do you know of any beaches in the Connecticut or Massachusetts area that allows dogs? Would love to bring our dog Blue for the first time. Awesome. This time of year, it's going to be challenging um, unless you do it late at night or like five in the morning. But we're not really familiar with the Connecticut and Massachusetts beaches. Yeah, I don't know. Beaches. Yeah. Ooh, that feels good. Yeah, I can't yeah. feel it at all. Hey. That feels really good. Is that facing the right way? I think so too. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it is. Awesome. Um, so I don't know, but off season, it's usually a good time to do it. Um, this time of year, it's always going to be challenging because it's high, it's high season. Next. Kimberly. How many hours a day can a dog wear an e-collar? Um, well, as long as you switch it every four to six hours for long periods of the day. Are you privately messaging Paul while we're doing this whole thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Hey, Paul, did you like that? I just sent your wife to my bedroom. Did you notice that, Paul? Did you see that? Literally, I said, Joel, get in my bedroom. Look at that. Huh? Don't worry, Paul. Nothing's going on. Yeah. Next. Go. <laughs> <laughs> Raised hackles are involuntary, just like goosebumps, as Linda said. Awesome. Who said that? Thank you so Beverly. much. See Beverly. See how I'm always right. Thank you, Bev. But see how I'm always right? You are always see? right. I know. Yep. All right. Chevy, thanks so much. You guys are the best. But hold on. Lori, so we see that. Maybe if the question is too long, it doesn't post. Ha ha. I didn't think uh, so. Yes. yes. Okay. Right. That's what it is. Uh, Stephanie, oh my God, your YouTube videos have helped so much with my GSD. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Lori's question has come through. Okay. Lori? That's not a, that's not a, well, she's been doing it in n numerous segments. Go ahead. Should I try and convince no. others? No. Go ahead. Sorry. Do, do you want me here? Yeah. Yes. Do you even want me here? Yes, I do. Say it. I want you here. Should I try and convince owners to train with e-collar first before bark collar? Dog barks in yard when they are not home. Okay. Lori. You shouldn't have to explain or convince an owner of anything. They should be on board. You're the expert. You need to pre-qualify. If you tell the owner 
I think your dog needs a bark collar when you're not home because it's barking. There's two options. Number one, don't leave your dog outside unattended. Number two, have a bark collar on it. Those are the two suggestions that I would have. If they don't like any of those, I don't have a third. It's called being a non-client. Our job is not to convince. Our job is to educate. Take it for what it's worth and then go. They're called non-clients. So if they don't get that, well, then why work with them? Why work with them? Got it? So you're going to drive yourself crazy. You're going to be unhappy. You're going to be a miserable dog trainer because you didn't pre-qualify. I'm not yelling at you um, either. Um, so what I want you to do is, like, these are my suggestions. Take it for what it's worth. But if, you're, but if they go, I don't want to use a bark collar. Fine. I want to keep my dog outside all day long. Fine. But then you can't ask me, you can't ask me to what? To stop the barking. Got it? It's not your, like, no. If the dog was at your house, you'd stop the barking because you would do what it took. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense for everybody out there, by the way. Next. Stephanie. I'm using an e-collar on my GSD, and it's amazing. Thank you for the free videos. Thank you. Hold on here. Let me just talk. To Stephanie, thank you so much. This is a great video. I mean, this is a great um, uh, a segue into this stuff. Ste I've never, I don't think I've ever met Stephanie before. I have no idea where Stephanie is. I don't know where she lives. I don't think we've probably ever Skyped or we've ever done anything. Maybe we've Skyped because I Skype with a lot of people. Stephanie is, Stephanie has, though, gone to my website, and this doesn't have to be my website. This is not an ego statement. It's the concept of massive amounts of free information out there. Massive amounts of free information out there. And I firmly believe that every single person should be making videos on something that adds value to the marketplace. Adding value to the marketplace on anything. So Joelle, she's really good with eating, um, proper diet, and she's really good at exercise and working out. Also, Joelle has gotten massively out of her comfort zone by, number one, hanging out with me, which makes a lot of people uncomfortable, so kudos for her for that. So she's gotten out of her comfort zone by doing a three-month internship here. That means she's leaving her husband, which is probably the hardest thing. Paul, I got your back, right? Probably the hardest thing. Um, she left her brand new house up in, in New Hampshire that she just moved into and still wasn't unpacked. She should be doing a series of videos about the struggles, the challenges, the big picture stuff. Um, she struggled with some stuff like she had to sit down and talk to her family about some things, about that, about making the hard decisions. Whatever you do, share your information. Share your information out there for others to consume with no obligation for anything in return. We all could be teachers. We all could be teachers. Right now, I'm having a problem with my Yeti microphone. This Yeti microphone is not syncing up at all. The last people I'm going to call is technical support. The first thing I'm going to do when I already started before this show is starting to Google the information. And I'll be watching other people's YouTube videos and how to troubleshoot it. I've got a feeling I might, be able to, I might have to take it apart, check for a loose wire. First thing I'm going to do is actually take out the switch out the USB cable, obviously. I already checked the settings. My point being, there's so much information out there that we could be giving. So someone like Stephanie has taken that as making dramatic changes. What I mean by that is there's no reason for 90% plus of dogs that are out of control to be out of control because the information is free. So even if you don't have the budget, you're not geographically close to, I know I'm ranting, geographically close to a, um, a dog trainer, your dog could be better. But why am I ranting? Because I'm sick and tired of freaking dogs being killed and surrendered for very simple things. Next. Can I get the power cord to my, 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 my um, um, thing? Maybe. Oh, Whoa, while you're down there. Yeah, I said not to make any weird jokes. I got, I got a pocket full of quarters to leave you as a tip. Sure. Next. Go ahead. Why'd you say that? Because it's not 50 cents. Next. All right. Hold on. Um. I can't explain this because it's too long. I know you said it's okay, but just verifying because trainers said that's a no-no, just wanted to do the right thing. Okay, Lori, <coughs> a trainer that said it's a no-no is because they've never successfully done it. Got it? Next. Stephanie. <clears throat> yeah. My dog is scared of the, the, 
I'm going to cough. <coughs> the vibration on the e-collar. No. Steph, go ahead. Sorry. Finish the question. My dog is scared of the vibration on the e-collar. So when should I start using the shock? Stephanie, I was just freaking giving you massive amounts of kudos and shout outs. I've never said use vibration on e-collars. Right? Never. Ever. So you should be using shock right away, but it's not high level shock. It's working level, low level shock to start. I don't use, I don't use vibration. You know why? It freaks dogs out. I, I, I can only think of one time to get a deaf, dog, a deaf dog's attention when it wasn't in drive, I used it, but I don't use vibration. So many dogs are freaked out by vibration. Next. Um, Kevin, <coughs> thanks for your help. Heard about you through a friend of John's, and now my wife and I watch all the time, so thanks for the support. Oh, my, my pleasure, Kevin. Thanks. Lori, I love your trainings and advice and have agreed with you with mostly everything, but confused about this issue. Lori, you don't have to agree with me about everything, but thank you very much. But I hopefully I just explained myself about the issue. Next. Paul, thanks, Jeff. I started the prong collar about three weeks ago and the educator about a week ago. Night and day difference. Bam, fist bump. Thanks, Paul. Robin, use the e-collar to teach my dog not to go after the toads in the backyard. Yeah. Lifesaver. These are poisonous. That's another good reason why. I know. Next. Stephanie, when my GSD had a prong collar on, she acts like it's hurting her. So I'm, am I using it incorrectly? Uh, not necessarily. Prong collars don't hurt dogs. And I know, trust me, I'm very aware of the conversation. Well, then why do they work? Which is the stupidest freaking comment anybody can make. We food train dogs. We clicker train dogs. That works too. Well, why don't you just do that? Because you can't stop an unwanted behavior with a, pos a positive marker. That's why. You have to use a punisher. So chances are you've got a very, either your dog's manipulative or sensitive. A prong collar, as barbaric as it looks, does not hurt a dog. It doesn't. It doesn't. So your dog just might be pushy and snotty and just being a drama queen. How many times have you said to your kid, if you have a kid, Angelo, you, okay, Angelo, shut off your tablet. He's really good at this, but lately he's been a little bit snarky. Shut off your tablet. He gets to watch his, ta his tablet, his electronics. He's playing Minecraft, too. Five-year-old kid rocking Minecraft. He figured it out all by himself. Pretty impressed. You might have to get him tested. So, Angelo, shut off your shut off your um your tablet. What does he do? Most of the time, he's like, okay. Some of the time, though, he's like, oh my god, this is the worst day ever. Why do I have to go to bed? He I don't want to go to bed. I don't want to go to bed. He's not in pain. He's not in discomfort. Now, if he doesn't shut up his freaking nonsense, he'll be in discomfort. But but <coughs> no. So sometimes dogs do the same thing. Next. Lori, I guess that's what you mean about so many different opinions with different trainers with tools. Yikes, so confusing at times since I'm so new with these tools. Lori, and like I said in my Patreon, if you haven't seen my Patreon response yet, you might not want to talk to me again because I sort of gave you a, I gave you a hard time on that. Um, that's why you need to start training massive amounts of dogs. Massive amounts of dogs. Next. Stephanie, first time catching you live. Yay, so many questions. Awesome, Stephanie. Carol, great seminar in Collingwood. Thanks again. Oh, my God. Question, could the e-collar have caused heart arrhythmia? My dog used to run around like crazy, but now just a bit of exercise. She sits down with the regular beats. We Now, that's a good – I've never heard of that, and I've e-collar trained thousands of dogs. The manufacturer has probably tested this on – our industry probably has trained 10 million dogs on e-collars. If that was a problem, I'd like to think – that we would know about that stuff. Same with seizures. Same with, um, so um, I've got a feeling it's probably coincidence. It could be the heat. It could be, literally, it could be coincidence. It could be coincidence. So we're not seeing that. We're not seeing that at all. I would contact Greg at eCower Technology, and I would ask him if there's any studies. Don't ask your vet, because your vet won't know, because your vet's not an expert um, on remote cowers at all but I highly doubt it. It is a muscle stimulator. I know the heart's a muscle, um, but I, I, we're not seeing that. We're not hearing about that. This is the first time I've heard about it. That doesn't mean it can't happen. 
Anything can happen. Also, I'll be in Collingwood next June. We're announcing the dates in the next week. Next. Um, this one's from The Zeke. Nice. Love the show and appreciate all that you guys do. Awesome. Thanks. Stephanie, I'm from Ohio, and I watch all of your videos. You're amazing. Stephanie, I will be doing a – I just contacted my buddy in Canton, Ohio um, today to schedule a seminar in Canton, Ohio. It's funny. She also said, I want to come to one of your seminars when you come to Ohio. Yeah, I'll be there. I get a lot of demand for Ohio, which is weird because there's a shitload of dog trainers in Ohio because there's a dog training school there. Next. Lori says, it's me that's confused. Ha ha. They will listen to me. Of course. That's all I know. So it always is. Stephanie, I've been to your website and thank you for getting back to me so quickly in messages. Uh, you're welcome. Hey, Lori, you're confused. Make a decision. Follow through. See how it plays out. Got it? Make a decision. Follow through. See how it plays out. If you're wrong, you're wrong. Got it? I've learned more from making mistakes in life than I have on anything else. No textbook, no mentor, no, no anything have I learned more from than my mistakes. Next. Um, ba, ba, ba. Paul, update the drivers for the Yeti perhaps happened to mine. Yeah, I thought of, that was my next step, but I figured this out 10 minutes before um, I went on and I didn't want to start doing that, but that was, rec that was recommended as well about updating my drivers. Thanks, Paul. Robin loves that rant. I wish more dog owners took the time to watch these videos and save their dogs. Cool. Awesome. Thank you, Robin. Angelo, what's up? Are you going to bed? Oh. So look at that. Say goodbye. This is YouTube Live. Want to say goodbye, YouTube Say goodbye, Live? YouTube. No? He's loving his papa. Love it. You want to give Joelle a hug? No, right. I'll take one of those too, buddy. Come on around, boo boo. Hold on, we gotta do a mm -hmm. Angelo going to bed break. Mm -hmm. I'll come visit you in a while. Okay. Did you brush your teeth? Mm -hmm. Nice. All right. Thank you, baby. All right. Okay, love you. You close the door. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, we'll come up and say good night. All right. Thanks. He'll be out cold. Oh my God, he's so cute. <laughs> He'll be out cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a good kid. No. Sabrina. Nice. Do you use a 50 foot long line? I have a 20 foot. Any need for more? Um, 50 foot's a lot. We don't have big, huge, humongous open fields like that. I would go with a 30 foot. The thing about it is if you get a 50 foot, you can always cut it. Right? So next. Stephanie, LOL. I'm so sorry. I used it before watching your video. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, but now I know. I'm so sorry. Say sorry again, Stephanie. <laughs> Just kidding. Or if you're in Canada, say sorry. Right, so you're you're fine, Steph. Don't worry about it. So I, I'm never mad at anybody, guys. I know I rant sometimes. I know sometimes I seem angry. I know I go off on these things. Um, if you've ever actually seen me train dogs, like privately, like by myself with the dog, I actually don't talk to the dog. I I, I train. You're not all worked up. No, I train very very calmly, very very quietly, very neutral energy. Next. Neutral. Yeah. Wow. Neutral. Yeah. Okay, Kimberly. You are right about a lot, lots of free info out there. Learned how to fix my running toilet today. Yes. I appreciate all the training info you put out. Are you ever in Spokane, Washington? Kimberly. Yes. Kimberly, I'm in Seattle in three weeks. <gasps> www.rvdogtrainer.com. I'm in Seattle in three weeks. And I was just up in Kelowna, which I know it's a different country. You went to Spokane once though, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. Oh, well, not that long, like two years year ago. ago. But I'll be in Seattle. It's worth the trip. It's actually not that far from you. Next. The Zeke. By the way, really love your business advice as well. Right up there with dog advice, top shelf and helpful. Awesome. But another, so Kimberly, <coughs> I, I was having a hard time setting a mouse trap. For some reason, like it wouldn't set. I went online on YouTube to find it. And then for some reason, there was a suggested video, how to tie your shoes. 15 million people watch this one video on how to tie your shoes. A lot of people need information out there. But guess what? I watched the free video. There was a ton of people that had watched it before me. I'm sure a ton of people watched it after me. And guess what? I figured out how to set the mouse trap. Next. Stephanie. Watching your videos, I've learned to teach my dog to kennel up, sit down in place. Honestly, I honestly think my dog is a dramatic dog. Yeah. We have a lot of that. I, 
we have dogs that if you look at, they go, oh, <laughs> you know? and it's not because they're afraid of us. They're just sensitive dogs. They're just sensitive Or maybe dogs. they think you're ugly. Well, they can't be like, they, if, if they, they can't say, you look like a dog. Because they're going to say, oh, not, you look like a human. Yeah, because if Ugh. they say you look like a dog, that means they probably have self-esteem issues themselves. Mm. You know what I mean? They're probably going to be like, ew, gross human. Yeah, next. I don't know. That's just me speculating. Um, Jake. If a, please stop. I can't help it. If a person had ever personally used an e-collar, hey, guys, what should they guys, do as soon as they pull it out of the box? Have any of you guys ever done any like manscaping at all? Please, I don't want you talking about <laughs> Has this. Has anybody done any? I do it frequently. I'm not going down to the, you know, to, I'm not going down to like Angelo, bare nothing, but I'm I'm itching for some reason today. I don't know why. It's the only thing I can think of. <laughs> but it's irritating the F out of me. Is that embarrassing? Is it? Oh. Joelle? I mean, her blood tells sure. that I mean. She's doing that dramatic effect for you, <laughs> now Joelle. Now people know that you sh are shaving your hoo-ha. <laughs> I'm not, sh I'm not, sh I'm not talking about shaving it. I don't like 70s bush. Give me a break. Okay, next. You weren't even around then. I was. Next. What are you talking about? Around when? Where? What in the 70s. I was born in the 70s. But you silly. weren't like, hopefully there was no <laughs> nothing else going on. Next. <sighs> If a person had never personally used an e-collar, what should they do as soon as they pull it out of the box? Um, read the owner's manual. So read the owner's manual, number one. So start out with the owner's manual. And then learn how to turn it on, learn how to charge it, and learn how to size it for the dog and understand all of the functions. And then learn how to get the working level for the dog. And we'll, we'll learn how to fit it properly and learn how to get a working level for the dog. Next. Yazarino. My dog is extremely food aggressive towards other dogs, mm -hmm. not towards humans. How many corrections on high with a mini educator will it take for her to understand the correction? Well, so this is the thing. I feed all my dogs in kennels, not because they're food aggressive, because it's the safest thing to do. So all of my dogs, and they're not fast eaters, all my dogs eat in 30 seconds or less. And they're not like, they're not fast eaters. My dogs are on the raw diet and they just eat their food and they're done. They all eat in but I've left my dog's kennels open and they don't fight. Sometimes I'm just lazy and I'm like, I'm just going to leave your kennels open and just so I don't got to come back and let you out because my dogs have sort of have indoor outdoor space. Um, but what I would do is I would, I would, I would get your dogs to be um, eating in their kennels. But then what I would do is this. I wouldn't, if my dog was eating food, I wouldn't allow another dog to walk up to it. It's a recipe for disaster. It is. But one good punisher should stop it because we do that with human aggression, human resource guarding all the time. The thing is, I don't want you to have to role play that and I don't want you to have to deal with that. Next. Barbara says, hello. Hey, Barbara. Jamal, no choice but to watch the replay, but hey, guys. Hey, Jamal. Hey, Jamal. How are you, buddy? By the way, he's not, his wife's not pregnant. You remember like two weeks ago, I'm like, hey, congrats, you know, Jamal's on, you know, his wife is pregnant, yada, yada. His wife's not pregnant. I thought his wife was pregnant. No. Who is it? Jamal. He's one of my Patreon no, people. No, whose wife is pregnant then? No, I, well, lots of people's wives right, are pregnant. Did he message you and say my wife's not no, pregnant? No, when the last time we talked, I'm like, Jamal, why didn't you correct me? He's like, well, I didn't want to like, cor like, correct me. Well, how'd you find out that his wife's not pregnant? Because he told me his wife's not pregnant. That's what I was asking. Yeah, he told me his wife's not pregnant. Next. God, you've got to listen. Lori. What I mean is, is it better to train with low-level e-collar first instead of a bark collar if you have a choice, even though they want issue resolved ASAP, okay. but still? Lori, I've answered this question to you. Just thinking too hard. You're thi no. Throw a damn bark collar on the dog and teach the dog to freaking shut up. Got it? Mm. You got it? And all these people, my colleagues... Don't do that. You want to teach the dog what it means first. Blah, 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 blah. Bullshit. You bark. You shut up. Great. Now we can train you to do stuff. Got it? Next. Stephanie. Don't ask me that question again, Lori. Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. My vet looked at me badly for using an e-collar, and I said, well, Jeff said it's okay. Stephanie, ask your vet <laughs> the last time he, he chopped the testicles off of a dog. 
Ask your vet the last time he took a sharp knife and cut and gutted a dog. Ask him the last time a dog came into the vet office and blew its anal glands. Do you know that the most fear my dog has ever shown is at a vet office? My dog has never blown its anal glands during a training exercise, during fireworks, during anything that I could remember, ever. The most fear inflicted on my dog is at the vet office. Got it? So tell your dog to stick to the medical shit. No nutrition, no training. Your vet, me. Said, what did I say? You said your dog. Your vet. Next. Next. Go. Yeah, I, I gotcha. I'm looking Got for it. it right now. Okay. Hi, Jeff. How do I stop my 11 week old Doberman puppy play rough with kids? So, Aaron, number one, if you've never raised a puppy before, that dog should be 11 weeks old. We're talking 20 hours a day in a crate. 20 hours a day in a crate. So let's make sure the kids are not on the floor, like roughhousing the dog. Your Doberman's going to be, well, you know this, right? Your Doberman's going to be a huge, unless it's one of those small Dobermans, but it's still going to be at least, you know, to the head. It's at least going to be almost a meter high. And if you've got a working line Doberman from Europe, that thing's going to be humongous. It's going to be over 100 pounds. So what I want you to do is this. Every Remember, you're not raising a puppy. You're raising a dog. So by the time that dog is six months old, it's going to be like, running over those kids. So everything right now should be structured. Dogs should be on a leash in the house. Everything should be structured at all. The only activity the kids should be doing is probably teaching it fetch and um, hanging out with it. 20 hours a day in a crate though, not all at once, excuse me, but over the course, the course of the day. So if the dog's playing rough, it's up to you to stop it. What can you do? I don't want the kids do delivering punishers to the dog. You can deliver a bonker. You can do a pet convincer. All these things are easily found on my website. Next. Stephanie, my GSD is actually going to the dog boarding train in Columbus for eight days. Awesome. Cool. Nice. Jamal says, Lori, LOL, baby girl, you know he's not going to switch advice <laughs> over here. Come on, believe in yourself and get that confidence up. Thank you, Jamal. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, Jamal and both of them are Patreon uh, supporters. Next. Oh, Stephanie, stop saying sorry. Stop it. You said, I'm so sorry. Wait, Stephanie, are you from Canada? Stop this. Next. What's Canada have to do with this? Everybody in Canada is like, sorry, 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 sorry. I don't know if that's a stereotype or not, but I, I experienced that was just up in Canada. Next. Double duckling. It's like when I'm in Germany. You know, it's like you get a lot of the, um, uh, what do they say? Schuldegan? Uh, uh, Schuldegan? I don't know what that means. Schuldegan? Who knows German? Is it Schuldegan? Excuse me? Yeah. Anyway, next. Double duckling. Hey guys, Carrie from New Zealand here. Glad hey, I caught Carrie. your chat. What can I do if my dog blows off the bonker and it was a decent tap? It wasn't decent enough. We rarely, get, rarely, we we rarely see a dog that blows off the bonker. It probably wasn't firm enough, or the dog was already aroused. You need to get at the beginning of the sequence. So next. Kimberly. Are there spots available in your Seattle session? I think someone bought the last. There's audit spots. There's plenty of audit spots because it's a huge facility. Working spots, there may not be any left. There might not be. If you go to rvdogtrainer.com, click on Seattle, you'll see. It Does it say sold out or not? If it doesn't say sold out, that means it's available. But even if you go as an audit spot, you will learn a ton some people prefer not to bring their dogs because they learn more because they can pay more attention. All right. So with or without your, what the heck was that? My God, with or without your dog, you're going to learn a ton. Next. Uh, Missy May. Hey, Missy. I love Ange so much. Yeah. Ange is awesome. I Thanks, love, Missy. I love Ange so much. I know. Barbara. Can't get signals here. Live in the boonies. Oh, sorry, Barbara. Oh, man. Stephanie says, LMAO, <laughs> my husband manscapes, and he itches sometimes, too, when growing back. See that? I just don't. See, Stephanie? Bam. Uh, uh, you don't you don't landscape? I don't talk about it. Okay. I it's talk a, about there's it. There's an unspoken rule. You oh, don't talk well, about that stuff. You don't talk about it on YouTube, or you don't talk about it at all? You just don't talk about it. You and Beth don't talk about it. You and Beth don't talk about your grooming habits. Yes or no? 
Yes she's or no? She's my best friend. Oh, you didn't answer the question. Yes or no? We've been best friends for 20 years. You still didn't answer years. the question. Thank you. Point taken. Next. Okay, Susan. It's hot out. Use powder to help with itch. Thank you, Susan. Why do my YouTube followers have more concern about my comfort than my wife? That's what I'd like to know. Go ahead. Next question. Go ahead. Nachum. Nachum? Yeah. You guys are on a roll tonight. I'm loving it. Hey, Nachum, I just liked your, by the way, I just liked your. You get the going. It's because I'm Jewish. I can't get it. <laughs> okay. It, it's Wait. not an Italian thing, I guess. No. But I'm I do, like. I do talk with my hands. But that's also a Jewish thing, too. Mm. So. Um, by the way, I'm loving your Instagram content. You're doing a great job. I'm super proud of you. I'm super proud of the chance that you took with your life um, after the last T3, the dramatic the dramatic change you're making in your life um, uh, uh, is so powerful. I'm so looking forward to the next the next year. It's going to be huge <laughs> for you. I'm so looking forward to it. Next. Missy May, do you think feeding dogs in crates makes them more protective over their kennels? I'm not seeing it. And if they, put it this way. We have dogs that are protective over their kennels that don't eat in their crates. I think it's a separate issue. I think it's a separate issue. Next. Jamal says, my wife is like, fucking thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Kimberly, my GSD service dog has always slept in a bed next to mine. I have mobility issues. That's different, Kimberly. And... Sorry, should I have her sleep in a crate now? No, Kimberly, no. So this is it. When it comes to when it comes to service dogs, it's different. It's different. Um, if you've got if you if you need mobility, um, oh, Linda's got to go. By the way, you want to jump in and ask the rest of the questions? Joelle? Oh, really? Oh, wait, I have to take my computer. Well, I don't have to take my computer actually. I don't need it. You know, but she can use my computer. Oh, okay. But you, she yours. It, she can use mine. Okay, you don't mind? No. All right. So say goodbye, Joelle. Bye step now. it up. Yeah, let me get. But I have to be professional with you though. Yeah. So that's the only thing. Okay, move out. Hold on, guys. Roll okay. out, peeps. Yep. All right, bye, guys. Get in there, Joelle. Hold Look on, at this. <laughs> Surprise for Joelle. I know, right? Fun stuff. So what you got to do, questions? You, questions are there. We're on Kimberly right there. And then okay. you'll be scrolling, you'll be like scrolling down. Gotcha. Okay? Yep. So Kimberly, so Kimberly, if you've got a service dog with mobility issues, um, now what you're going to do with, with you with mobility issues, that's a little bit of a different story. That's a different story. Um, but if you've got a service dog with, that has got this resource guards, which it shouldn't separation anxiety, which it shouldn't, um, um, uh, reactive on the leash, which it shouldn't, then that's a game changer. But service dogs are different. Next. Also, if your dog doesn't have any freaking behavior problems, who cares where your dog sleeps? Next. Okay. Stephanie, what makes me upset is I'm, trying to work with my dog and my family will not get on board she is she's so she acts confused a bit so stephanie just a little bit louder. so okay. so so stephanie because we're using this mic I'm like, gotcha. so this is the thing steph everyone's got to be on board time for a family meeting and at least the minimum at the minimum what you can do is you can just ask people to stop to stop at least self-sabotaging so at least tell people to stop self-sabotaging all right next my GSC weighs 87 pounds. What size crate should she have? Um, ooh, I don't know the actual size. It's probably going to be an extra large, though. Probably going to be an extra large. Big enough that the dog, probably about the size of the dog bed, right? Unless it's got one of those humongous circular dog beds. So I, I don't know dimensions. Like, how wide would it be? Um, 36 inches wide or 30 inches wide by what? 42 inches long? I don't know. I mean, the, your dog wants to be able to sort of like lie down like a horse. Next. Um, Marion answered your question about how to say excuse me in German. Where is it? And in It is in Schuligam. Thank you, Marion. Thank you, Marianne. thank you. Thank you, Marion. I, I was saying that all the time on this. It's been a while since I've been to Germany. I love Germany. I love Berlin. I got some really, I got some, I have some fantastic stories about Linda and I literally almost getting arrested by four <laughs> guys with AK-47s in, in Germany. We literally were 10 seconds away. We've shared the story probably 10 seconds away from getting arrested. Yeah. Yeah. Next. Um, Keith says, is it acceptable to have days when you're not using the e-collar or should we have it on every day? So, I mean, 
you know, this is the thing. I hate to lose training opportunities. That's going to be personal choice. But what you don't want to do is this. The worst thing to do with a remote collar is this. Dog's behaving badly. Oh, let me go get my e-collar. That's what you don't want. That's what you don't want to do. So, but that's up to you. By the way, this is Joelle. Joelle has been with me now for two weeks. Yep. Two weeks. She's doing a three-month internship program. And um, she's learning everything. Everything. Yep. And being put on the spot for social media. Which <laughs> Daily. Is, which is probably not one of your biggest uh, uh, comfort zones. No, it's not. Yeah. So, which enforces me, as yeah. always. So I'm proud of you. Thanks. Proud of you. Good job. Next. Um... K9 Dog Training says, yay, Joelle. We love Linda, but a special guest is fun. Thank you. Barbara says, the only problem I have with my dog is jumping on people. She's crazy about people. Okay. Um, there's probably other issues, but I'll, I'll let you be okay with that. Um, um, most, like, I wish I only had one problem with my dog. Um, uh, what I would do is I've got a video on how to stop jumping. It's easier to stop a dog from Jump from from it's easier to stop a dog from jumping than it is teaching a sit in my opinion. Um, I stop dogs from jumping in less than three seconds, and I've got a video on that. Um, watch the video next. Can e collar be used or bark collar on a GSD for separation anxiety? Yes, for some reason I'm not seeing. I'm, I'm either behind on my questions. Um, uh, hold on here. There we go. Yeah. Um, so. Separate. The thing about separation anxiety is this. Okay, e collar. Okay, what did we say? Bark collar. Is that a bark collar question? Yes. A bark collar is only good when you're not there. I mean, I should say that it's good when you're not there. If you were also there but not in the room, it's also good because it's self-activating. A remote collar is only good if you're actually there. But one of the best things out there for for separation anxiety is a bark co a remote collar. And everyone's gonna be like, no, the dog's already afraid. It'll make it worse. My response is no, it won't because we do it all the time. So next. Um, Jamal Stephanie, says 42 or 48 inch. Yeah. Next. next. Stephanie says, somebody asked me to pet my GSD, which is 15 weeks. And I told them no with no explanation. To them. Awesome, Stephanie. Now, if 15 weeks old with your dog, what you can start doing is we would do social outings. Well, first of all, I want my dog to be social but not excited to see humans. I don't want my dogs to be excited when they see people or dogs. I want them to be neutral. It's the philosophy of public access. It's a public access philosophy. It's a service dog philosophy. It's a me being a selfish dog owner philosophy. It's my dog. I want to be the most important thing in my dog's life philosophy. So um, that, that sounds good. Never explain, never explain yourself to people ever, ever. It's, you know, but people are entitled next. They feel entitled next. Um, Aaron says, should I give my 11 weeks old Doberman puppy dog food or raw chicken diet? Um, at that age, you have to be, at that age when they're growing, you just want to make sure that you're balanced. So I wouldn't just do raw chicken. You need a lot of components. Too much chicken in general is not good, even for my adult dogs. So you, what I would do is you want to research the heck out of raw diet for puppies. Because there's a lot of factors. There's a lot of factors because they're growing so much, both mentally and physically. Next. Um, Chevy says, teaching the out with the remote collar during fetch. Is there such a thing as going too high? She's pretty stubborn. Um, too high would be if they never want to pick up a ball again, right? <laughs> but, but if she's pretty stubborn, then don't worry about the number. Worry about the response. Next. Um, Shashank says eight month boxador runs to place. How to train to walk on the placemat. Problem is to control the state of mind. Uh, it's not the worst thing that they run. Put the dog on a leash and slow it down though. Okay. Heather says I'm doing great. That's Hillary, by the way. Yes, Hillary. Yes. Thanks, Hillary. I'm no, like, no, just she hasn't changed her YouTube name. Yet. No, no, no. I know it was but her. she changed it almost on everything though. Yeah. Yep. Um, Stephanie says that is Give yourself, give yourself a fucking proper shout out. Joelle, <laughs> you're doing great. Love you. Thanks, Hillary. <laughs> Stephanie says, that is what we're working on is being social and keeping her attention on me. Awesome. Yeah. Keith says, how can you make them stop being excited to see humans? Keith, believe it or not, the question is, how do you stop a behavior, right? How do you stop a behavior? Through punishment. Through punishment. So what I would do is start teaching your dog to exist around humans 
not let humans pet your dog and um, become everything to your dog. So what you want to do is remote collar heal your dog. That's a fantastic thing to do. 15 weeks old, though. No, your dog's not 15 weeks old. That was oh, – wait, hold on. No, Keith, Keith isn't 15 weeks old. Um, at the beginning of their when they're puppyhood, though, they do get excited about humans. But remember that one you, – you weren't here when we had that one dog we got from eight weeks old from the breeder. That dog at 16 weeks old was walking through farmer's market ignoring people. It just, it just was always, it just, it, it played, it did fun stuff, but it was so, we made it so handler slash owner centric that nothing, it was, it didn't get its enjoyment from environmentals. It got its enjoyment from us. So we controlled everything with that dog. Next. Um, Robin says, I was at a hundred on e-collar to teach my dog not to go after my hand. When I picked up the Frisbee, she didn't even make a peep. Drive really changes their mindset. Oh, yeah. It works though. Perfect fetch now. Yeah. So Rob, drive, like I said, I own a dog named Uma who is dead now 10 years ago, maybe. No. So she died two or three years ago. So this goes back to when she was maybe one or two years old. She blew through a dog tra 1900 which is a powerful remote on 127 chasing a deer. Literally blew through it, kept chasing the deer. Never, well, she eventually stopped. When her drive was down, I found her. So I actually, re, I actually changed the way I trained recall. And this is a dog who, when I would say here, and she was running towards something, she would turn so quick to head back that, she would almost like like keep going the other way, which probably wasn't good for her spine um, or her muscles, but that's how intense her recall was. A deer though, boom, I missed it. I missed the opportunity. So I started practicing high level recall in low drive, high consequence, and then frequent recall in high drive. So we pro I proofed the heck out of that and that never happened again. Next. My dog does excitement pee. I've tried to stay calm. Oh. I walk in and she still does Oh, it. my God. I'd rather have your dog bite me. I really would. Excitement pee is really, really challenging. So what you need to do, what you need to do is this with excitement pee is we work dogs through excitement pee and nervous pee. And what do we do? Everything is neutral. Every interaction is neutral. You hear when that dog had, um, it's a huge dog. Yeah. Yep. It was a mastiff, I think. I thought the Dolby did too. The Dolby did too, yeah. So what do we do? Everything is neutral. Everything is neutral. Everything is calm. Everything is structured. No excitement. Watch your praise. Watch your food rewards. Anything that gets that dog excited, boom, you got to stop. Next. Um, Barbara says, I'm a senior citizen. Training is getting a little harder, I but I love her. I know, Barbara. <laughs> I know. Congratulations to you. You forget sometimes too when you get a new dog and you're a little bit older. Next. Um, how do I begin to learn how to deal with a dog on dog aggression reactivity? I'm getting into the dog training career and I find this to be one of my biggest struggles to work with. Any tips? Yeah. Don't get into it with dog on dog aggression. Do an internship with somebody that's done it hundreds of times, if not thousands of times successfully. Um, so what I want you to do is be super careful. Working with aggressive dogs is very appetizing for a lot of people. There's a high rate of injury. You could actually be, your career could end. You could also be responsible for the death of the dog by not doing it right. The best way to do it though, is work with somebody that's been doing it for a while. That's really, really good. And there are folks out there that have done it, but be super, super careful. Next. Melissa says, Joelle, do you have any dogs of your own? I do. I have two. I have a black lab and a German shepherd. And my shepherd, I trained all through Jeff's videos. So nice. That's so cool. we have a, we have a five dollar um, super a super fan. They go right to the top. So you read that. Okay. Um, Shashank says, I love your content. Luckily, I got awesome dog trainer. I train canine in Ontario. Oh, awesome. Uses the same principles. I watch all your content with trainers pointers. Oh, awesome. I think I see I train canine on my some of my social media. It might not be. There's a lot of ones that sound familiar, but awesome. Cool. Thank you so much. Thanks for the five dollars. And he got he did five dollars by clicking that little dollar sign there. And some people just throw us money, five bucks, ten bucks, just to say thank you. Next. Stephanie says, My dog whines when I leave, so she 
she will get separation anxiety when she goes to board and train? No, not necessarily. Not necessarily. But if she does, that's their problem. So in other words, I can't imagine us ever calling up an owner saying, oh, by the way, your dog has separation anxiety. It has to go back to you. Like, that's our job. Like, the only thing we would ever ask an owner to pick up a dog for, if they were in town and the dog had a disease that was contagious, but if they were out of town, because a lot of people send the dogs to us when they leave town, we'll just have to quarantine it in a separate area. But we still work it. We just have to take massive sterilization protocols on cleaning stuff up. But other than that, that's their issue. That's their issue. A lot of times, though, it doesn't exist with trainers because separation anxiety, a lot of it is human-centric, owner-centric. Next. Aaron says, my puppy lives in the backyard. He has wooden kennel door. It's open, and he goes in and out. Should I keep him tied or loose? So, well, if you have a fenced-in yard, keep him loose. I'm not a big fan of tying up a dog. And guys, nobody freak out. He's not talking about a two-foot fucking chain like you see on the news. He's not. And also, by the way, sled dogs are also tied out. They're staked out. They're staked to their doghouse. They're staked to the 50-gallon drum. They do fine. It's a whole other lifestyle. But if you've got the space, if you have the space, if your dog doesn't dig under the fence, jump over the fence, give the dog a little bit of freedom. I'm not a big fan of a tie-out in that situation because they could, they could, they could hang themselves somehow. Next. Susan says, I miss so many of your live videos. Love I know. It. That's because I'm not on a consistent schedule, Susan. That's my problem. I think that's it. I think that's it. That's it. All right, everybody. Thank you so much. We did an hour and 21 minutes. Joelle, thanks for jumping in. Of course. That's awesome. Thank you so much. All right, guys. May I be in love with you, and I'll talk to you soon.